these two teams, they got a lot of bad blood. Because <laughs> we used to have bad blood. But baby, now we got bad blood. Hey! Okay, you know what? I'm done. When we get back, we are going to speak with someone who actually wants to talk football. Yes! Yeah. Yeah, that is Kansas City Chiefs star and Taylor Swift's apparent boyfriend, Travis Kelsey, with a surprise appearance on last night's season 49 premiere of Saturday Night Live, the first show back since the writer's strike that lasted nearly five months. SNL alum Pete Davidson hosted the show with musical guest Ice Spice. And Taylor Swift was there herself, introducing a song from Ice Spice. A lot going on across the street here last night. As Taylor plays through an extraordinary career's worth of music on her Eras tour, she often nods to the man who helped her to create those iconic songs. Jack Antonoff, who rose to fame in the band Fun, wrote and produced with Taylor on the album's 1989, Reputation, Lover, Folklore, and Midnights. He's won eight Grammy Awards, including the last two years for Producer of the Year. When Antonoff is not working as one of music's most in-demand producers, he's making new music with his band Bleachers. Jack and I got together for a Sunday sit-down in New York at the legendary Electric Lady Studios, opened in 1970 by Jimi Hendrix. I think this was Jimi Hendrix's apartment. But what I love about it is that D'Angelo recorded voodoo in this room. Oh, did he really? Jack Antonoff spends his life chasing the perfect sound. It's just really punchy. Yeah, yeah. And so, like, very specific stuff that I would, like, never record on anything but this. Within these famous walls, he makes music with the biggest names in the business, including Taylor Swift. It's me. Lana Del Rey and Lord. Why is this such a special place? There's just something about it. You know, we're all making records at different times and everyone's kind of passing through and listening to each other's records and spending time together. The record Antonov has been making lately is the fourth studio album from his band Bleachers. I literally gave the thumbs up to the to the master and it's perfect today yeah this morning and which I, is really funny because it's that last five percent that's kind of everything you make the biggest decisions i imagine it's got to be hard though to say that's it that's the record that's going to live forever you can i find it kind of easy only because if i can feel something that makes me feel you know gut feeling that thing impossible to put words to then it's done the 39-year-old Antonoff developed that musical gut growing up just outside of New York City in New Jersey. His life and his work have been shaped by the anguishing loss of his younger sister, Sarah, who died of brain cancer when she was just 13. What was the place you were coming from on this one? My whole life I had written about my sister died when I was 18 and I kind of wrote pretty much about that loss through the lens of different ages which is a really powerful place to write from and then there was something about the band growing to where it was being with my partner getting married like they, they all felt very like real armor towards the future where I, I felt like I could for the first time write a little bit outside that lens I've heard you talk about how pivotal, obviously, in your life, but also in your music, the death of your sister was because the family's focus was on her when she got sick. Yeah. And they sort of said to you, go do your thing, yeah. go play music. My parents just felt like they were, like, frying a bigger fish or something. Because she was sick, so they, in a great way, they just didn't care. They were just like, oh, who cares? School doesn't really, like, do what you want to do. <laughs> Antonov formed his first band in high school, a punk rock group called Outline, and later fronted the indie band Steel Train. When do you say, I think this is my life now. This is my job now. I remember one year I um, was just touring and touring and touring and touring and touring, and I ended the year with, with $40,000, and I thought to myself, like, I might be able to move out one day and it was pretty powerful 
In 2008, Antonov got together with two friends to form the band Fun, beginning a ride that brought them a triple platinum album, a pair of Grammys, and international fame. When you guys started having number one songs and winning Grammys and all that, for you personally, I'm sure very exciting musically. I was complicated. That band was always a side project for me. You know, like I always wrote and performed my old own songs. So I, that band started with three friends and just kind of became very stressful. And it got so big, right? So fast, it was hard to pull back. It also back. got big in a weird way. Everyone's just sort of like, well, if you don't do this, you'll never play Germany again. Or we have to do this right after this show or else. And it's like, no. No, your need to create and to live a life where you don't turn into a zombie is paramount. Everyone will be fine. I feel like once you're starting to like actually see it from a bird's eye view, it just becomes really interesting. Mm -hmm. I guess it was right around the time fun was going on hiatus that you started producing. Yeah, well, I always loved doing it. A lot of the su success of that band enabled people to be like a little bit more willing to imagine that I could, or letting you in the doors. Well, it helps when the first person, I guess, to approach you to produce is Taylor Swift, right? She's the first one to say, sort of the industry was kind of like, you can't produce yet. She's like, no, you, you produce this. That relationship has gone on and on and on, and I think we've just pushed each, each other endlessly. There are videos I can call up online that are popular of you and Taylor in a room writing a song. Uh, I think of like getaway, getaway car. car. Took the money in the bag and I stole took the, the money. Took the, put the money in the bag and I, I stole, stole the, the keys. keys. That was the last time you ever saw me. Ah! So why do you think you and Taylor work so well together? What's the magic there? She vacationed uh, on the Jersey Shore, I think, when she was a kid. <laughs> so that's <laughs> so. There's a sense of <laughs> no, I'm kidding. That's forever. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I could quantify our relationship in very reductive ways about the things we agree on, the sounds we like, but the truth is we've just grown together and she's put an amazing amount of belief in me. It's powerful. They are professional collaborators and good friends. Swift created a stir this summer when she attended Antonoff's wedding at, yes, the Jersey Shore. With a new marriage and new music, Antonoff is looking ahead, like always. It's sort of the only way is to just chart new spaces and, and try new things and report from where you are. And it's really, really hard when you have an entire industry of people telling you you're never going to work again unless you do that again, unless you can find those rare, I'm lucky I have them, those rare, rare, rare people who just really light a fire in you to continuously find yourself over and over and over again. At, where, at wherever you are in life. That Bleachers album Jack just finished will be out early next year. Our big thanks to the famed Electric Lady Studios in New York for hosting our conversation. Don't forget to subscribe to the Sunday Sit Down podcast to hear the full extended interview with Jack Antonoff. There's so much more there for you music fans. You can find that on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get yours. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't miss the Today Show every weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific on our streaming channel, Today All Day. To watch, head to today.com slash all day or click the link right here.